Hello and welcome back to Corpse Party. So, uh, I finally got around to uh, getting the rubbing alcohol that you need to uh, burn the hair off the door. Um, it took me a while. It took me a couple tries. But I finally got it. So, let's get on with it. Does the hair look rubbing alcohol? Yes. After hastily splashing alcohol all along the edges of the door, Naomi lit a match in an attempt to burn through the seemingly endless strands of hair. Alright. With a sizable whoosh and a waft of foul-smelling heat, the hair lit up, then hardened and fell away, freeing the door and allowing it to open. Get the hell out of here! I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Ew. And all over the wall. Naomi, what happened? Are you okay? Sorry for the mess. What are you talking about? Don't apologize for barfing, you poor girl. Everything's okay. You'll feel better now that it's out of your system. You need me to rub your back? I think I'll be fine. Thanks, though. Did you find Yuka? Looks like we really are the only two people here. The, oh, the only two living people, anyway. This place is just way too quiet. How about you, Naomi? Is your leg any better? Are you okay to be up and about? Well, I was resting. I was suddenly attacked by this creepy, black apparition thing. What? Oh my god, are you alright? I think so. We should consider that room off limits from here on out, though. That's fine. I'm just glad you're okay. I guess we'd better keep moving then. Can you stand? But where are we supposed to go? We've already been pretty much everywhere we can go in this godforsaken school. And the only other people we've come across are all dead. Damn it. There I go again. It's hopeless. We're finished and I'm so tired. I'm acting like a child again. Naomi, come on, it's not that bad. We'll figure something out. Class 2 4s never say die, right? We're invincible. I've got a hairdresser's appointment first thing in the morning tomorrow. 
And I intend to keep it. And then in the afternoon, let's say you and I go get our bikes fixed. Sounds like a plan, right? If we make it back alive, sure. This is Seiko, what am I doing? I just can't seem to hold back. Naomi, are you like super duper tired or something? This is this is so not like you. Come on, raise that chin. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. What the hell's got you so chipper? Whoopsie. I skipped it. You just keep smiling and laughing. Do I? Tell me, how long is that going to last if it turns out that we can never go home again? Have you given that any thought at all? We'll figure something out? That's a crock and you know it. I must have finally cracked under the pressure. This whole situation was just more than my soul could bear. I thought I'd be keeping Seiko's spirit up till the bitter end. But just like that, I was berating her, abusing her. All I had running through my head was pain and sadness. I was like a baby throwing a hissy fit. I was crying out irrationally and I couldn't stop. Venomous words were flowing from my mouth as if someone had turned on a, a spigot. Uh, all I could do was moan, complain, and belittle. I really was behaving just like a spoiled little brat. I'm sure our family... ...are going to be really worried about us. They're going to search and search, but they'll never find us. It'll be a terrible burden for them. You're wrong. How so? About it being a burden. When you... When you lose a loved one, you cherish that person's memory. It's never a burden. You just want to do whatever you can. Whatever you can to make her proud. You just want to, so you do. What is wrong with me? Seiko's mom disappeared several years ago. I know that. So why am I putting her through all this grief? That's how I feel the people we leave behind are going to feel. I don't know how it is for you and your family. But normal people don't work that way. Naomi. Sorry. How about we split up? We can cover more ground that way. Maybe find a clue to help us get out of here. Seems the most efficient plan of attack, don't you think? Who? Who says things like that? 
I have to apologize. I want to get home just as much as you do. Back to my dad and you and everybody else. And I sure as hell don't want to make them worry about me. This is all my fault. I have to apologize. But most of all, I don't want you, of all people, to speak of me like that. Seiko, I... I... I'm... I'm so... I... I'm sorry too, but it's okay. If that's what you think we should do, then let's split up. I'll go this way. No. What the hell is wrong with me? I couldn't even manage to say the word sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, and so? In this nexus of closed faces, where humans are scattered and imprisoned and killed, two friends who should have been thankful just for the small favor of being trapped together in this unforgiving place, were quickly and easily divided. My petty obstinacy towards Seiko would come to be the biggest regret of my life as the consequences of that heated exchange were far and more dire than I could have ever imagined. Jerk. I think I just heard somebody calling out. Follow the voice? Yes. That was the first time, huh? The first time I ever fought with Naomi like that. From the moment Seiko and I parted ways, the fear had been, I'd been harboring since I got here just kept growing stronger and stronger. I felt like something else was in my head, like I was under some alien influence. In my mentally distraught state, I ran all through the building, frantically searching for Seiko. I just kept calling her name over and over again. When I finally came back to my senses, I found myself standing in the third floor hallway. Seiko! Seiko? Seiko, where are you? Come on, Seiko, don't leave me by myself in here. Seiko? <laughs> Is 
Is that you? Oh no. No, 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 no. No, please, no. No! They go! The cell door is locked from the inside. Someone's definitely in there. No. There you go. Why? Why? No, no. Seiko, you're alive? Hold on, I'll get you down. I might be able to use this as a footstool. That's exactly what I was thinking. This is so revolting. What if it saves Seiko? A significant number of maggots have found their way onto Naomi's hands and skirt. Oh, who cares? Acquired filthy bucket. Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Seiko! I'm right here! Seiko, I'm right here! No. The filthy bucket fell from Naomi's hands. With blank eyes, Seiko swung back and forth slowly in her noose. All life had been completely drained from her face. Why? Why would you hang yourself? You were smiling and laughing all this time. Didn't you say we'd find a way out of here together? Stop this. Don't leave me all by myself. I'm seriously about to cry. <laughs> I want to apologize to you for what I said. Up until just a few hours before, I was laughing and playing in school with my best friend. Now, here she was, right in front of my eyes, lifeless, hanging from a noose. How could I possibly accept that as reality? I can't believe this is real. I refuse to accept it. It just can't be. Continued in Chapter 2. All right, so this is the end of this part. Um, I really hope that you that you're enjoying it so far, uh, because I certainly am. Even though I kind of got pissed off in the last part of this because I died, but at least I got it figured out, 
and I'm having fun again, uh, except for the fact that I'm crying because Psycho died. Um, so if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below, and if you haven't already, subscribe to become part of the legacy today. And I will see you guys in the next video, so bye bye